pussy power, money on the grind. <laughs> Do you love the Songs or Spells podcast? Hearing about all the easy spiritual tips to help you live your best life? Well, I am living proof that it works and so is this week's amazing guest, Wanda. So why not join us over on the Patreon community? Once you subscribe, you have full access to the entire back catalogue of exclusive weekly Patreon episodes and an optional weekly group connect call where we share tips on how to apply this to our everyday lives. Are you ready to manifest everything you've ever wanted? Because the power is in you. You can access the Patreon community via the link in the show notes or our Instagram bio link at Songs or Spells Podcast or just send me a DM. I can't wait to meet you. Hello and welcome back to the Songs or Spells Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Carolyn King, PhD, freelance music lecturer, published author, podcaster tarot reader to the rock stars you name it i do it um, welcome back i had a great response to last week's episode with the wonderful brick smith so thank you so much for all your support now this week is a very very special live episode so this episode was recorded back in march in one of my classes. I teach an amazing module called Diversity in the Creative Industries at the wonderful BIM Manchester. And you will even hear some of my wonderful students ask amazing questions during this episode too. So that is why the audio sounds kind of funny, but this episode is gonna change your life. My very special guest is Wanda, an incredible artist from Manchester who went from living in her car to being signed to Heavenly Records. Her story is incredible. From having insomnia to a spiritual awakening to feeling that her demons run away from her now. You are in for a treat. And you will also hear my wonderful co-lecturer and very special co-host from this week, Lavender Rodriguez. Lavender is an electronic alt-soul genre-bending composer who is on the No Such Thing Records label based in Manchester. I will post all their links in the show notes. So, let's dive in. A good question to kick off with would be, is there diversity in the creative industries from your own lived experience? Uh, from my own lived experience, at the moment, yeah, I think there is. I think there's more and more. It's becoming more and more diverse. I think it, it didn't necessarily when I when I started out. It didn't look too diverse. I wasn't even diverse as an artist then anyway. So maybe my perspective wasn't seeing the diversity. But as I've become more diverse, then my world has become more diverse. So I think it depends on like how you see things, your perspective in the industry. You know what I mean. <laughs> But yeah, I, I believe it is becoming more and more diverse. It can be a lot more diverse. There's a hell of a lot of room for more diversity, but it, it's getting space. It's getting there. And Lavender has spoke quite extensively about your own experience as well. Do, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, definitely. I think when I started, it wasn't that diverse. But I wasn't thinking about it either. Yeah. I was just wanting to make music. And then now I definitely see it. It could definitely be better. And that I definitely have like questions for that, especially in Manchester compared to the South. But yeah, I guess so. It depends what genre as well. Like I, I wouldn't say indie rock, punk are getting more as more diverse as it could be. I think it, there's a lot more scope to diversify in every sense of the manner. But other genres, it's definitely diversifying a lot, a lot further. So mm, interesting, yeah. yeah. And I also think it depends on where you live as well. Like yeah. she talked about the South, certain areas of the North itself. Manchester, we're lucky because we live in Manchester. It is a diverse city within itself. Yeah. But there's a lot of places in the North that are not diverse at all. Do you know what I mean? So we're, we're actually lucky that we're on a sort of forward thinking city. That's great. Yeah, yeah that's really good. So I really want to know about your musical journey. When did you start making music? Uh, well, I've always like dabbled and dabbled, but making music seriously, I would say about 10 years ago. And that was with Bats in the Belfry. I started off on my own for about six months to a year. 
and then they joined their female duo and we called ourselves Bats in the Belfry. We actually did that to try and be a bit diverse because that's a kind of indie name and we knew it was an indie name, but we thought, okay, two rappers having an indie name will stand out. So we called ourselves Bats in the Belfry. And um, yeah, we did that for a bit, did that for about three years. First single got straight to Radio One and then just, we didn't really get along within the group, within she got a new girlfriend and then she wasn't coming to practice and not coming to turn up to shows and things like that. So then we split up and then I stopped making music. I, I got very depressed, stopped making music, went into sales for years. And then when it's, it's when I found my sort of awakening is when I thought, fuck this. Like, so I thought, no, I, this is what I've always wanted to do. The only reason I gave up is because I thought that it, like my time had done but then when I when I realised that Ras, wonder you are everything you've ever needed. You don't need anything else. Your time can never be done. Time is irrelevant. You know, when I realised that, then I thought, right, go right back into it. And, and then a year later, I got signed. Amazing. What a story. I mean, imagine you had stopped. Ex exactly, <laughs> exactly. I always see that. There's that picture. I don't know if anyone's seen that picture it's some like it's a viral picture where there's a guy like hacking at like hacking at a mine or something like that and there's diamonds just that just at the other end there and one guy stops and walks away but there's another you know what i mean but there's diamonds just so if he hacked for another like three months he would have got it yeah. but because he's been hacking for time he's been mm -hmm. hacking for time and he stopped and then walked away just before you get me? I mean, that's a lesson to all of us. Just like, yeah. Consistency, Consistency is key. Consistency, yeah, totally. And who is your main influences? I tend to go with the flow. Like I said before, I wasn't diverse at all, so I just stuck to hip-hop. I was kind of like rigid hip-hop, you know what I mean? Kind of like very sort of like street rigid hip-hop. But now, I, I'm i still hip-hop, but I, I'm hip-hop and everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can, like I did a track with um, audiobooks not long ago, and they're like, like pop electronic whatever but i'm still wonder on that track mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i go with what i feel like if someone passes me a track i don't care what genre it is really if i'm feeling it i feel feel like i can get a little flow if i'm starting to flow in it then i think yeah you like you know what i mean and then yeah right so i don't care i go through feelings and energy rather than right this is my genre so i write to that yeah. you know what i mean yeah. no bring it be and it sounds good and i'm, I'm feeling it then right self flow in it Amazing, yeah, synchronicity, flow, all exactly, that stuff. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You have to go with life and not be rigid. Life isn't rigid, so I'm not rigid. Yeah, yeah you've got to match that. Exactly. Yeah. You talked about there was a point where you had a bit of an awakening. Can you yeah. tell us more about that? That was a, it was a special time in my life. I'm not going to talk too long because I'll take up the whole two hours and then <laughs> someone will call you back next week and all that. But cut a long story short, I wasn't sleeping for about a week. I kept waking up at about 3, 4 a.m. And just couldn't sleep. I was just there, not doing much. But it was annoying, do you know what I mean? You know when you want to sleep and you can't sleep? So then one of these nights, probably on the fourth night, my best friend's brother sent me a video and it said 12 laws of the universe that will change your life. And normally I would discard it and think it's like, I was raised in a Christian home. So things like that I was taught were witchcraft or demonic, do you know what I mean? You have to stay away from it. You can't meditate, anything like that. You can't enter your mind. Anything like that is bad, yeah? So I looked at this video, it was 45 minutes long, and I thought, oh, I can't sleep, so let's watch it, and it'll probably put me to sleep through watching it. Something said, just let's watch it, so I thought, okay, put it on. Within 10 minutes, I was crying. Within 10 minutes, I was like, whoa, the woman spoke like a robot as well. She was like, Argh. the voice was weird, but still, every word, I was like, whoa, why didn't anyone tell me this before? I felt like everything that I should have known, I know now. I, I, I'll act weird, so I don't want to go too much into it because I start like, you know what I mean? But like, it really like my body felt weird. I was crying more than I've ever cried in my life, like, but like baby tears. But it felt good. There wasn't sad tears. There were just like wow tears. I've never had wow tears like that before. And then yes, yeah, since that day, everything changed. I used to be scared of the dark, but I mean proper scared of the dark. If a partner was next to me, I could kind of like sleep with the light off but still i have to have the covers over my head because i can't and like every bit of me like tucked in because i used to think like i swear that i'm a big girl as well but i still used to think like things would get me i'm not joking i used to love horror films after a horror film i used to come back home and it would, it would terrify me for days do you know what i mean yeah and i'll still watch them do you know what i mean i still love watching them but like now after that i can since that day 
I sleep with the light off all the time, but now I watch horror films and purposely I'll come home, I'll have all the lights off and I'll stand there and say, try me now. Do you get me? I say that my demons run away from me now, trust me. I used to be terrified of everything. I used to hold my wing because I couldn't go to, and that's why I do it now to say, Raz, I've been like bound all my life. And now, do you get me? That's, ugh. Oh. So, there's a, oh, yeah, so, that's, what the awakening was, I pick up spiders, oh, damn, not scared of them, oh, it's mad. I was going to say, I've been something similar, but I'm still scared of spiders. I, 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 I sort of like guide them out. I say to myself, you can't chill with me in the room, but if I'm not there, do your thing. If I see you there, I'm going to guide you out, you know what I mean? I won't kill you, but you're not chilling with me. Mm. I love it. So it just sounds like, I mean, see on the track, Rude Girl, it's like, know your worth, know your yeah. power. I am obsessed. That needs to be like everyone's alarm, by the way. <laughs> it's like, that is how you start the day. So that does that really reflect kind of what you went through? 100%. It's about like, that's how, by believing in me, that is the, that was my power. I used to think it's everything external when I get this, when I reach this place, when I, now I have to take it right back into myself. Just think, you are the shit. I used to doubt myself and call, but now any little bit of doubt comes in, I slap it back saying, No, I'm a God. I actually believe I'm a God now. And I believe, but I believe every single one of us are gods, not just me. I believe every single one of us in this room are gods. You have to believe that you are for the power to come. And a God, all that means that we create. Do you get me? We, we create our own worlds. Yeah, it's madness. So we actually did a whole lesson on this last week, so they all know about this. Okay, <laughs> oh, okay, come on then, so I'm not just the crazy one. All right, see. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about um, witchcraft and as a kind of person-centered power, yeah. call what you like, witchcraft, self-development, yeah, yeah, yeah. psychology, whatever the hell you want to call it, it's all the I used to think witchcraft was a bad thing, but it, it's it's not. It's, I don't, I don't sort of exactly know the ins and outs of it because I just call myself a god. You know what I mean? But I just know it's not a bad thing, if you know what I mean. I know it's that belief in a power within, if you know what I mean. And that's 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 magical. It is magical. Yeah, it is. Because we're not told to be that way. And I think, especially as women, I don't think we're told to... We're not taught it, like you said. We're not. And that's intrinsic to us. That should be taught in biology. That should be taught in school. Yeah. Schools, and that's why... My main goal is to create, I've always said this, is create a hip-hop therapy school. I do hip-hop therapy as well. But it's to, I call it hip-hop therapy because I, I use hip-hop to sort of, I mainly work on your spirituality, do you know what I mean, and your mind. Because I believe any any art that you do, any, anything you do, especially in the industry, you need to have a strong mind. You need to be in control of this because if not, you'll be knocked left, right and centre. You need to be able to centre yourself anywhere that you go. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, so that's what I want to do, but I want to get them from young, from, like, free. Yeah. So, like, do you know what I mean? So, really, and they'll be able to take over the world. Once you've got your mind, you can do anything. You're just floating through life. I love it so much. <laughs> you can. It's yeah. about bringing things in. It's not about putting other people first. It's about putting yourself first, and everything else will come. Love will come within that. People think, oh, you have to give to everyone, but then... You've got nothing to give if you've not lifted yourself up. You have to boost, like, I can't stress how important it is to boost yourself up first. That is power. Yeah. And then everything else will come. Everything that you want will come, but you have to work on yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly what happens for you then. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. yeah. And I'm still, I'm still like, ah, oh, like, oh. All those like, yeah, yeah, everything's still there, right there. <laughs> My manifestation is still happening daily. You know what I mean? And that's why life's exciting because then life will be, you know what you want. You're just enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. You want to be a musician, just make music. Mm -hmm. Instead of stressing about them goals or what's going to happen here, what's going to happen here now. Just make music. That's what we, that's what the musicians love to do. Mm -hmm. Be in the love of it. When you're in the love of it, mad things will happen. But stay in the love of it and don't concern yourself for anything else. But by bringing yourself into yourself and just believing in what you've got. Because if you believe what no one else has got your source, you get me? Hone on that and you choose. Yeah. So pussy power, that's that's all it is incorporated into that. I'm a I'm a um, it's not even really anything to do with my sexuality, I'm a lesbian. But it's also just to show people Raz, I'm saying pussy power because everyone's like, oh, I'm just saying pussy power. A lot of people are like, oh wonder, they DM me and they say but they're scared to like say it out or say it, you know what I mean? <laughs> but they say, Oh wonder, love that word. But it's nice because like, it's about like Raz, accept yourself. That's yeah. like pussy power, like my power comes from me. 
You get me? It's yeah. about women now. We are, we are powerful. Yeah. You get me to another level. And that's why I shout it out, you know, for women to know that Ross, we can do anything. Mm -hmm. You get me? And that's why I try and be so brash about it because I want other women to stand up and think, Ross, I can do what the yeah. fuck I want because one does what the fuck she wants, so I can do it. Yeah. That's all it is about. Totally. Just do what the fuck you want. Yeah. And be happy with doing that, but don't do it because you feel there's a need to because of this or because that do it because that's what you love. Do you get me? And then everything mm. else will work. I love it. I love it. So do you have other practices that you do? You said you were told not to do things like yeah, yes. meditation and stuff like that. Do you do things like that? Yeah, I meditate. I meditate every morning. Um, wake up. I've got my Abraham Hicks morning meditation. That's the one I, I always use. Abraham Hicks. Yeah, Abraham Hicks. I'm done. But yeah, every single morning I wake up and I meditate. And what I also do as well is I've got a little quote that I tell myself. And I also do letters in the future that I read every day. I so, love that. Yeah, so I do 30 day letters in the future. So what, what I've been reading every morning, or if I, if I forget to read it in the morning, I'll read it at some point in the day. And in thanking, I thank myself, I thank the universe for everything that's happened in March. So this, this I've already thanked him every day. And it's like I'm in April and everything that's happened has happened. So I'm saying, yeah, that's sick. And that day was good because I went there and went. But obviously I've not done it yet, but I have done it yet. That's the mad thing. <laughs> so that's what I do. And it's a, it's just a mad, it's a mad way to speed up your manifestations because then by the end of that month, by the time you reach April, you're like, you read, you're like, you're like, right, that's happened, that's happened. And it's like things that you just read and, in the, oh, I might confuse myself, but yeah, you guys know what I mean, isn't it? And it, it happens, it's sick. Yeah. So yeah, I do yeah. little things like that. Totally, totally. And I, so I do a very similar practice. <laughs> and I find that, see, if I don't do it, I'll probably have a bit of a shit day. Yeah. I like, or things just won't come through the way I wanted them to. Yeah. But no, it's, it's good, and it is a daily practice. Like I tell people, just like your body needs food every single day, you don't just eat once a month and think, yeah, that's cool, and I just ate once for my life, do you know what I mean? And that's good. No, so you wouldn't just meditate once. Your, your sort of mental health, your spiritual self, is that your main self. You get me? Our body just shells our power. So you have to be topping up your power every single day, the way that you breathe all the time, and you eat food to fuel your body. You have to meditate and tell yourself positive things every single day to boost you up. Because I know if you, 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 your brain's constantly telling you negative things, I know that 100% your brain every day tells you, you can't do this, or oh, don't go there, that person look you, uh, uh. So you have to be counteracting that all the time. You have to be boosting yourself by giving, topping yourself up with positive stuff. If not, then I don't know if anyone's seen IKEA. There's an IKEA trial that they did with two plants. Has anyone seen that? Have you seen that before? Yeah. See it. And it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So what they did, just from IKEA, they got two plants from the IKEA warehouse and they put them in two boxes. And it was sort of to teach children about the effects of bullying, but really it's just spirituality. Do you know what I mean? It's just consciousness. So one plant they said they told the kids to say all bad words to it. So like, you're nothing, you'll never survive in this world, you're shit. Because they like the tiny air voices like that. And then um, the, the other one. They told her to say good things about it, like, you're amazing, you're beautiful, you'll make it in this world. Yeah. And then within six weeks, or was it 30 days or something? Or, yeah, yeah th within 30 days, the one that they were saying bad things to was like deteriorating, it was all brown, dying, everything. The one that saying good things to, and this is the crazy thing, they said that it didn't just grow, it flourished more than it would have normally flourished in normal life. Isn't that mad? And that's the effects that we're having on ourselves. So every time you're saying to yourself, like, yo, shit, you can't do this, you can't, I swear down, you are killing a little bit of your soul. And that's why the anxiety comes in and the depression comes in and things like that, because you've been knocking yourself every day. You get me? So imagine you every day boosting yourself up. I think, yeah, you're sick, you can do this, you're amazing, all this. You know what I mean? Say that to yourself every single day, I swear down, you'll start feeling amazing and amazing things will start tapping around you to boost up what you already feel. Yeah. yeah, it's all momentum. That's all it's it is. Momentum. Yeah, yeah. I had a crazy manifestation story from last week. Jeez, God. So I've been, yeah, really like daily momentum and it's been building. I can feel it building. Mm -hmm. And I randomly posted a picture of myself from last year in Nashville. Jeez. And I was like, oh, I miss Nashville, something like that, right? The next day, I shit you know music biz were like do you want to come speak at that in, in that oh my days <laughs> no 
No, but that's how no, but that, uh, that's why I love life. I love it. Can I ask what your affirmation is? You said you've got a kind of deal. So uh, I am powerful. I am lovable. I am worthy. I say that every single day. Um, I also say I'm an international artist touring all around the world with vast amounts of wealth, surrounded by beautiful, kind people. I say that every single day. True. True. <laughs> Already is, because you designed it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> so I would love to know then, who, who inspires you? Just people. I, I get inspired just by everyday people that crack on and do the, do the thing. Not even just conscious people, just everyday people that don't give a fuck and do their thing. I, I get inspired by... Rebels as well, you know what I mean? Because I think like, in every rebel, I used to think, oh, it's just the back end, this, 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 that, even though I was, but now I believe like, in every rebel, if you just taught the rebel like, the principles, they're already sick, because they already don't listen. You get me, that's the key, that's the main key, is you have to listen to your own self, but they don't listen and they don't love themselves, and that's why things don't move. But if they have that self-love and they still have the rebel mentality to do what I'm doing, and that's it, just focus on what I'm doing, then maybe you'll shine. So I even, yeah, that's why, that's why I love working with like, crew kids or offending kids and stuff like that, because I love their minds, they've got the right mind, and they've got the right spirit, they just need to have that love, you get me? And they think this their shit as well, and then that's so it's never gonna work out for yeah. you. You know what I mean? But you have to think that you're sick, and then you don't, you don't have to listen to anyone else, that doesn't, that doesn't, yeah. that's here there or anywhere, do you know what I mean? It's just about listening to yourself. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you Spellcast, your weekly astrological guide. So last week we had the start of the Lion's Gate portal on the 7th of July. Now this remains open to the 8th of August. So this is sometimes called the Lion's Gate portal or the Lion's Gateway and it marks a time of increased cosmic energy flowing between the physical and the spiritual realms. It goes way back to the ancient Egyptian and for thousands of years has been observed and honoured as a sacred time of activating energy and good vibes. It's marked by powerhouse numbers 88, so you might start to see that everywhere. And the sun is in the astrological sign of Leo, so this is about power and it's associated with expansive qualities of the planet Jupiter and an energetic impulse for action and accomplishment, providing an open window for manifestation and conscious co-creation with the natural vibe of the universe. So this, in other words, is a really potent time to bring in your manifestations. And if you want to know how to accelerate those, then you need to log on to our Patreon community for a very special episode just this week on some easy tips on how to do that. Now back to the main podcast. I know you wanted to ask about Manchester specifically. Yeah, so I've been having a lot of chats with Dirty Freud, you know, yeah. and every time we sit down and talk about music, we always have a, a little ramble about the Manchester scene and whether it truly supports black creators. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to know your opinions because we've got our own, but I don't know what you think. Well, like... <sighs> I, I applied for about three years ago for that PRS Black Creator Fund and within that obviously I, I had a view where not for really, not for really, they're not supported for really in, in my eyes but then like I think I'm like I'm sometimes the wrong person to act with that and that's why sometimes there was one time like everyone slated me on Facebook because because with me like I, I I, I can't look at, I can't focus on, it's not even a focus, I don't want to say people are bad for focusing on it and talking about it, but in my world now, I've navigated it, do you know what I mean, and I know, but then at the same time, I know it, I know it's there and it exists, so you have to speak up about it. I think the more people like myself and yourself and Dirty Freud that are black musicians, black artists that are out there doing things, we're the ones breaking the barriers, barriers, you could talk about it and talk about it till the cows come home, do you know what I mean? But you actually have to get up there and do action. And that's why I'm saying, like, with me, it's about I'm changing it by doing it. I can't just sit there and talk about it. And that's why I don't really like talking about it. I'm just showing people, do you get me? If I change the game and do things that, like, a lot of black women don't do or black women don't normally do, then I'm creating that space. You get me? Yeah. So it's up to us as well as, as well as we can. I think people... 
it's there now. We have to we have to take action. <laughs> we do have to take action by building ourselves up to levels where we do have power in the industry. You get me? And that's where we're gonna make a change. If we talk and just sit back, because sometimes when you talk and sit back and you're putting that sort of like Big that like, victim self on yourself, not in a, ah, maybe I'm saying the wrong word, but you're putting that self within yourself where you're giving yourself that barrier by thinking too much of the barriers. Yeah, we know it's there. Now let's just do solutions now. You get me? No more barrier talk because that's making, in your subconscious, think about barriers. You get me? Which is then putting a barrier there. That you don't, you know what I mean? So it's then it's not helping other black people or other black artists. You know what I mean? We're then, but... But I know, okay, we know it's there, let's acknowledge it's there, and let's do something to change it. You get me? Let's make that way. You get me? Like, Martin Luther King could have just talked, but you have to go and do marches, you have to go and do action. You have to, action is the one that did it. You get me? It was the action the one that did it. If you just talk to talk to talk to talk to talk, people think, yeah, ah, turn the turn on that. Ah, this guy's talking too much. But because Ras, they're seeing him like people getting beat up, this and that, you know what I mean? Action and marched. So when people stood up, he literally made a way. And that's what we have to do, man. We have to make a way. So interesting. Yeah, because there's a few of us doing it, I think. The problem lies in the people that talk, that also don't notice it. And I think I've been in so many spaces. Like yesterday, it was International Women's Day. And I didn't get to go to Deaf Institute because I was teaching. And I know there were loads of panels. And I was like, great, cool. And I was scrolling through Instagram. And I was like, oh, all these great people but not a single black person. And I was like, well, how, how are we About doing? diversity as well. It was just about like women in the industry, yeah, like promoters, artists, managers, everyone who was involved. I had a lot of friends there, but not, I, I texted a mate who works in Live Nation, and I was like, I, I'm glad you got, but you went, but like, how are you talking about change, but it's still not Yeah, happening. that's madness. Yeah. And that was just yesterday, in 2023, like International Women's Day, so. I don't know, about, where was that again? Deaf Institute. This is the thing. <laughs> How many artists were there? I had four panels. The first one was with some intimate instrumentalists from mainly loose articles, the band. And then it was like some promoters, some managers, and then they had a couple of DJs and loose articles performed. And one of the DJs is from a band, a black band as well, and I can't remember the bit. Oh, Big Journey. And that was kind of the only representative that we had. <laughs> yeah, but then I, I believe action would then be, because who, who put that in? Put and send in an email to him. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That is action. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That is action. Exactly. Just talking him and take, do you know what I mean? We yeah. could talk about it now, but then the action would be, so that is to say, okay. Yeah. We, we know that there's an event on. Why wasn't there any, do you know what I mean? Exactly, like either of them, one of us. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do that, because that's, that, that's, that's mad. Yeah. But then, like I'm saying, it's action. Because yeah. we could just sit there and think, oh, they're not doing yeah, what yeah, yeah. But let's take Absolutely. action and then next year, look, they'll do it. Mm. Because people have then spoke up. Yeah. But if we just sat down and just spoke about it, mm. it'll be the same next year. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean yeah, it's just interesting because like, I don't think any of those people would have noticed. But they have panels. Sometimes they have to get called out as yeah. well, isn't it? That's the thing. Yeah. It's just mad. Like, this industry is, is a bit mad. But it can be exhausting trying to like continuously push barriers like I, i'll do a run of gigs and i'm like oh, i'm still the only person like this is ridiculous yeah but that's what i'm saying like you have to like we can't be fighting everyone's battle we have to fight our own battle and then we'll lead a way for we'll make a way for them if we're putting everyone's struggles on our back saying right i have to do this for any black person in the world mate that that's not like it's not the best stra strategy yeah. you get me you focus on you're the black person. Mm -hmm. So if you do something in the industry, you 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 are doing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is creating space. Right, Think so about, yeah, yeah, just by you doing it. Yeah. Can't carry everyone's burden and then try and do it like that because you're not going to get as far then, then what have you done? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've let the negativity or the whole, the, the yeah, the situation engulf you instead of grass, knowing the situation and taking control of it and then taking action on that. That was, that was my big question. Yeah. Have yeah. you got any small questions? Small questions. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. Um, come back to me. Come back to me. Okay. Yeah. So should we open it up to the beautiful students then? What would you like to ask? <laughs> How do you deal with haters? Like, we, you were talking earlier about sort of, like, 
how how positive your mindset's yeah. become. I feel very much the same. Like yeah. I've I've got to a place where I can be that positive to myself. Yeah. But it's now just getting other people to recognise that for me as well. If that makes sense. Like because I'll, I'll just go out and I'll just kind of I'll act more confident. Yeah. But people just seem to take that as me being a cocky prick now. No, but it's it, like, it, it. I just I just don't know how to deal with that. That doesn't feeling. that doesn't matter. You don't dim your light just because other people aren't shiny bright enough. Do you know what I mean? So how I see now I used to be like, oh, if someone didn't like me, I used to think, oh, what can I do to change myself further? But now it's like, Ross, I'm sick. So if you don't like me, you're weird. You get me? That's how you come by. I don't care if you don't like me all the way though, not me. You get me? So that's how I, that's how I, and then it just, you don't care anymore. Just do you. Who cares? You're not here to be liked. You're here to like yourself. So you're winning. If you think you're sick, you're winning. Gods don't have mid-grounds, do they? Gods don't some nice like Sundays think, oh, be half God this day or be, no, you have power every day. You get me? So no. When you're queens and kings don't have days where they're sometimes not keen to, like, you know what I mean? No. So don't let anyone dim you down for what? Do you know what I mean? Why why be less of you for what? It don't make any sense that. Do you know what I mean? Why be a bit less sad than you normally are every day or a bit less? Do you know what I mean? When you do find your true self, you are extreme. You get me? You're not gonna be like anyone else because it's then you are the real you. You get me? Be more weird if you just like acting like everyone else was, then that's what I think is strange. Because it's it's impossible to act like anyone else if we are unique individuals. So any you know what I mean? Like you were saying about kind of, you know, be yourself and be the truest version of yourself, be really positive. Do you have any kind of practices you've done that have helped you to find who you are and what you do and what you like and be confident in, in that? Yeah, I've always just wanted to do music. I've always felt myself in, in music. I've never really done any particular practices to find. Maybe that's something that I would do. I've always wanted to sort of do retreats or something like that. I take myself away. I've never done anything like that before. I do like 15 minute meditations in the morning and just think that I'm sick all day. Do you know? <laughs> so I do. <laughs> oh, I do it. But but no, because I know there's a lot of there's a lot of different practices that you can do and a lot of especially when it comes to sort of consciousness. I try and change it from saying spirituality now because it's not it's just being conscious. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of different practices that you can do that I think can take you uh, sometimes take you away from the whole essence of it, which is just believing in your own power. Because sometimes I think my, my girlfriend does like breathing therapy and a lot of crystal work and stuff like that. And then I, I sometimes think that's that's great because it tops you up and it things like that. But then if you just rely on that and you don't believe in yourself, you don't do anything. You know what I mean? So that's the but if you, you don't have to use any of that and just believe in yourself, you just get the same results. So it's you know what I mean? So it depends on what you like. You might like crystals or like this or like that. So yeah, just do anything that you enjoy. Even really, and that will help you find yourself. How do you stay in the moment? Every day. That's why I do that. There's a reason why I do that to refocus myself every day. You know what I mean? And the reason I do it in the morning as well is so that sets my mind up right so then if not sometimes like Carlin was saying if you don't sometimes then you feel like negative thoughts coming in and then you have to fight hard and start batting them away and batting them back but when you meditate then you sort of set yourself up meditate see what's going to happen in the day then you're good you know what i mean and then when things come like that away you, you might have a little thing breathe breathe yourself into the now focus on this this second the second that you're in now and then negativity will dissipate or go you, nothing can exist, no negativity can exist in the now. If you're in the present moment, that's power, really. Breathe yourself into it if you're not in it. Breathe deep breaths because it will take yourself into the now. And that's how that's how people alleviate it. That's why your doctors alleviate panic attacks through that because that's just all a conscious thing. By breathing it, all they're doing is taking you into the present moment and that's how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, they're really starting to, to wake up, I think, to a lot of the, the power of this stuff, but it's always been here. Yeah, it's, it's just we've been, been told now that's for like tree huggers and stuff, yeah, exactly. you know? Yeah. Or um, being drowned or burned. My friend really wants to start it, but she doesn't know where to start. And I'm like, literally, you've got all you need on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. You are, you are. And also, as students, you get like free or half price memberships to stuff like Cam. Headspace is a great Headspace. one. Yeah. Really Can I recommend the book? Axe and ask axe 
I don't know how to say it. Asking yeah. Asking it is given. Yeah. <laughs> that book, if you guys take that book out, swear down, that book changed my life. That book is sick. Read that book and it is mad. And it also does like games at the end. And it calls them games as well, because in life we don't, you shouldn't see work as work anyway, it's games. But it tells you games to do, where you'll quickly manifest things or do little things where if you follow them, then it will show you that you can just manifest, you know what I mean? And then you'll get hooked because you'll think, Ras, this life's not what I thought it was, and then, do you get me? But read that book, start to finish, and I swear down, then come and talk to me, then DM me, and I want to talk to you about it, swear down. Seriously, so yeah, please do that. And if someone does read it, please talk to me, because I'll have a sick conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's changing from what if, what if, what if it goes wrong instead you have to say to yourself, yeah. well, what if it goes really well? Yeah. Oh, when, when it goes yeah, well, yeah, do you know, yeah. when, not yeah, what yeah, if, you're yeah. still not, if you're still not That's doubting, so when, yeah. when, when, when. Yeah, how do you like navigate it when like you're doing all that stuff and life keeps like throwing shit? All right, so just recently, <laughs> that's what happened like recently, I had like quite a, a big dip, my dad died mm. in July. Mm. And I was still, I was like, being dead strong and but being with my family so long and being within that space and I sat there with my dad and this is what sort of like got to me and stopped meditating and everything because I was so like it just all yeah consuming sat there with my dad and he was asking me questions like oh like why is this happening because he eats or he eats so well like he hasn't ate salt for like 15 years he eats vegetables do you know what I mean so he was like asking me and that's like I had they're dying and asking me a question like that, I felt like breaking down, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then being around the family and then just, I don't know, that it got to me, it really did. Life for the like, three, for three months, that three month period, I still had my own self and I still see my powerful, lovely and worthy thing, but I, I had, I wasn't as, do you know what I mean? My pussy power was like a bit depleting a little bit. It was like a halfway. Recently. Yeah, I mean, I need to go petrol station. Recently, you get me. So, and then I think it's like, yeah, exactly. And I think it's just because I was like, I was too. I don't know how to put it. Like, I never experienced anything like that before. But I didn't even. I didn't expect to. I was in the sort of spiritual state where, right, don't even let any negative feelings come through you. Like, right. So I didn't even accept them. Do you know what I mean? I didn't accept the sadness, didn't accept the pain, didn't accept, just tried to like smash through it. Do you know what I mean? But, and it got me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it broke me down a little bit. And then after that, it's like about a month after that, just before Christmas, I was I was looking for, I wanted to start my, my mixtape because my, my label was like, right, we need to get a body of work from you. Right? So I wanted to start my mixtape. And it was at the time where I was still like, my head, I still wasn't meditating every day, stopped that for about three months. And still seeing my powerful love worry, but as I said, I was feeling a bit depleted. And so, and then I started looking for a producer. I needed a producer for this um, new tape. I started producing a bit, but I wanted someone to guide it, like the whole project, you know what I mean? Be like the director producer. So I hit up her Metrodome. So I got onto him and said, oh, Metro, can you like do this for me? And he was like, oh, it's a pleasure one day. But then in my head, in my head, I didn't like, I didn't realize I knew what I was doing. I was sort of like chasing things and I never do that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So then he was like, yeah, it's a pleasure. That's good. And then he set it up and he's like, one day, right, I'll do this plan for you. Rah, 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 rah. Wrote a plan up. Rah, rah. Within two weeks of me asking him, or about two weeks after that, I got back to my myself. I read The Power of Now. Something's all right, go back. Oh, read The Power of Now. Mm -hmm. It boosted me back up and I realised that, look, I spoke to my manager as well. My manager was telling me as well, I like, wonder you've been, I didn't want to say it at the time, but you, you did. Do you know what I mean? You took a step back, like you have, like, do you know what I mean? And I knew it's because, it because I didn't let them, I didn't accept them feelings that I had. You know what I mean? And now, reading the power of now, I'm not supposed to shy away from them negative feelings that you have. Just not sit in them. Do you know what I mean? I'm supposed to accept that. Yeah, I can be sad. Mm -hmm. You get me? Being sad doesn't mean I'm not a god. Being sad doesn't mean I don't have power. Accept them feelings, but don't dwell in them. Accept them and understand why they're there. See what they're teaching you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I believe that that, that period taught me 
to accept my feet, do you know what I mean? To accept because I was running away with just, uh, do you know what I mean? So it, 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 accept, it taught me to accept my feelings and then three weeks after that, and then Metrodome didn't, I tried to message him and he didn't get back to me. And I was thinking, man, what the hell? Like, where is my friend as well, do you know what I mean? So feeling a bit like, and then, and this was about a week before the end of the year, 2022, then 6th of January, and I'm meditating my way into the new year, 6th of January, a guy that I've been wanting to work for, could you, oh, mate, he is cold. Been wanting to work for him for like 10 years, for time. <laughs> he got onto me and he said, like, Wanda, I want to be a producer. I've been wanting to be a producer for time. Someone told me to get onto you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not supposed to be chasing stuff. I'm supposed to be attracting it. Do you get me? But because, like, I started even doubting by me chasing and thinking, oh, I need to go and find this. That was me doubting myself. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I should be kicking back and thinking, Raz, universe, I want a producer. Go and find me one. <laughs> and it'll come, do you get me? Literally. So, uh, yeah, and then everything, then I bounced back. I completed that power of now. And now it's just, I've just learned more to accept them learn from my negative feelings rather than running away from them. But that, yeah, that did hit me. Mm. Yeah. So what you call that shadow work? Yeah. Oh, is it? So Jeez. yeah. I so did shadow work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so accepting that and, and kind of working through it, like you said, not sitting in it, wallowing yeah. in it, not to sound like cold or callous or anything, but yeah, working through yeah. it, working through it, dealing with it, I yeah. suppose, not the best that you can. Yeah. Um, clears the path and then yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why I don't it, like things weren't things were happening. Where I even lost my youth job in that time. I lost all my system, my youth track, everything. Like three, four grand's worth of equipment just. Oh my god. Yeah, got stolen. That's the yeah. So it's like because I was feeling so things, I was attracting things that weren't good as well. Bad things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, guys. My pussy powers are right. Like, <laughs> so, you know, like, I need like, I get me. I need some like cling film to like stop it dripping. <laughs> you're so right, though, and that totally proves that it works as well. Because once you're in that negative spiral, then it's like, oh, this, this, mm. this, this, this. So it, that's just for me. That's further proof that it works. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we got any more questions? It's not really a question. You basically just said it. But I've literally got written on my fridge, experience your emotions rather than judging them. Gee, I think it's like yes. just about like knowing, like you said, like knowing that you can be sad or angry or embarrassed or whatever it might be, but like rather, not even like dwelling, but rather than judging them and like yeah, worrying about yeah. like oh god, I don't want to, I don't want to feel this right now. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel, it doesn't feel comfortable. You can't ever grow if you're not okay. uncomfortable. Okay. Like okay. as grim as it is to be uncomfortable, you have to mm -hmm. actually like. Mm -hmm. You just have to do yeah. that to them. I know that you're learn. still good within that comfort, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's I that, that, said that yeah. yeah, it's that <laughs> fact that before it's about oh shit things are happening, so everything's gonna be shit, everything's shit. But it's like, no, okay, this is happening on the surface, but we're like we're an ocean. You get me? Things happen on the top of the ocean, the ocean is still calm, you get me? We're we're the whole ocean. Mm -hmm. We're not so anything can happen on the surface. We still peace. We still at peace. We're still peaceful, and that's what I'm learning to accept now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I kick the mic down. There, <laughs> <laughs> that's not good, is it? <laughs> um, that just kind of made me think. Like, have you ever done any like therapy or spiritual therapy, anything like that? No, no, no. I do. Um, I do hip hop therapy. Yeah. But yeah, I've not. I've never that. taken any. Like, no. That's insane. That's so insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it took me two years of like spiritual therapy to get to get even remotely oh, to your vibe. No, I told you that video and just I I believed every word, I swear down, yeah. it really did make me think shit like I was in the matrix. And I still believe that this this is what this world is. Mm -hmm. When you when you've got your mind open, you are like Neo, because everything people think that this they're living in the real world and they're not. Mm -hmm. They're just do you know what I mean? The uh, Cause it could be sick. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, charge. Yeah. 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 I guess that another point on that would be as well. You can't control others, so yeah, stay in your own lane. But you mm -hmm. can't control the bullshit that other people say. Hundred. That's yeah. a, that's oh, like yeah. good job you mentioned that because that's what gets people down. The weird people, they have friends and they have this, and the two what two bothered with what other people are doing. Just don't care. I swear down that doesn't bother you, don't serve you one bit. Do you know what I mean? I'll probably deserve you. Just leave people to do what they we cannot, no matter how hard we try, I swear down there's not gonna be any time you can change it on. So stop trying. Just only person you can change is yourself. Concentrate on that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Get me, stop trying to build a house with fucking shh. Like, I don't even know, I don't even know that. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, yeah, Abraham Hicks all that would say just let that shit go, yeah. let it go. Oh, it's not your battle, it's not yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's why I'm saying about a similar mindset that I have with all this, like yeah. let's know that the problem's there and then use ourselves to fight it. Let's not carry in everyone else who struggles with us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it won't serve us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We have to change it by changing what we do. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Any other books or films? The power of Now is sick. Yeah. Watch that. We need the power of now. Uh, and what else can I say? I can't tell just in general. Sad Guru. Yeah. He's sick. A lot of stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, just Abraham Hicks on YouTube generally. Uh, and then just do your own affirmations. You know what I mean? Just tell yourself how sick you are. I swear down. Just by telling yourself every morning how sick you are in your own way. That will boost you. If you do it every single day, I swear down, within six months, you will feel, you'll just feel sick. I don't know how to explain it. You just feel like you can just do anything. You know what I mean? And that's always a good way to feel this. Instead of thinking, oh, why is this? Do you know what I mean? Walking around like you shouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Rather walk around like you're the place. You know what I mean? It still works whether you believe it or not. It's just working without you controlling it. But let's be on top of it and control how it works, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And as we're saying this to a first year class, the cheat of Donald Trump totally believes that he is the shit. Yeah. Like, above and beyond whatever the hell he is, right? He believes that he is the president and that he's a billionaire. Well, that's why I can't knock him and that's why I can't knock Kanye either because, sorry, like, everyone does need Kanye self love. I'm not even lying, they do. <laughs> so down they do. You need to love yourself as much. Yeah, you do. Like you need to have blind self loving yourself. Who cares what anyone else thinks or what flaws anyone else thinks you have? You just need to love yourself. Like that's it. Accept who you are. Accept your flaws. Do you know what I mean? Accept yourself. Stop knocking yourself all the time. I always say like if you had a best friend or someone that you was dead fond of, and someone came up to them and started saying, oh, your shit, you can't do this, you can't do that, can't you? You'll say, sure, don't you dare speak to my friend like that. My friend can do anything that she wants. But you knock yourself. So why would you be defending, you know what I mean? You won't let anyone speak to your little brother the same way that you speak to yourself. You won't let anyone speak to your mum the same way that you speak to yourself. It don't make any sense. So why don't big up yourself and say, if your friend, like, was supposed to, say, do an exam and they failed an exam, you won't think, oh, your shit the Why did you fail it? You'll say, no, try again next time. Oh, there's always, yeah, it wasn't your own fault. Like, it was the teacher's fault. They literally didn't teach you properly. You know what I mean? You're starting to make excuses for them. Why did they, you know what I mean? So, why to yourself, if you then failed, you're on, you'll think, oh, your shit, see, you couldn't have done that, see. You'll start putting yourself down, but just treat yourself like that. That, that person that you're really fond of in your life, you know what I mean? And for them people, you let them go, you'll give them chances over chance over chance. You should be giving, that's what you should be doing to yourself. You, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. It's like in a child work. Have you done an oh, yes. Oh, jeez, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's nice. You wouldn't speak to the little you like that. So exactly, like that. yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll be soft to them and gentle and you give them time and give them space and give, you know what I mean? Let them open up in your time, do things in your time. Do that to yourself. Stop rushing yourself and pushing yourself and crushing yourself and bother ishing to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think everyone should do inner child work. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like, that, I've done this, I've done like a chakra healing thing by yeah. accident once. Like, when I, was <laughs> trying, I was just trying to do a meditation to get to sleep and it was like a really powerful chakra healing and I swear to God, like, I was the same, I was just bawling my eyes out oh. and I was just like, that was like a big turning point for me as well, so I'm talking yeah. into it all as well, but yeah. like, it's just crazy that some people haven't ever done that because I just think like that's you as a human like we should all just yeah. be looking after our like little little you <laughs> sounds silly but like you should, like you, like I say you wouldn't be mean to you as a child so why would you be yeah. mean to yourself as an adult? You say good things to yourself in the morning and I'll check if you've done it so you'll come back the next day and say did you say anything oh, I wonder no I couldn't do it it's too hard and I can't so I used to think whoa that made me even believe more in consciousness so I thought how are you finding it so hard to, they say that they can't say it, I think. But you can say, they'll say negative things, and that comforts them. You get me? And that's just comforting your pain. I, I won't go into it, but you've got a pain, but it's comforting that. But the fact that you cannot stand there when no one else is there in a room, and you think it's weird to say good things to yourself, but not weird to say bad things to yourself. 
I think he's strange. Mm. It's well, because that's their norm. That's their norm state, and it's where they feel safe and comfortable. A lot of it. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, so they've not broke through yet. And it's that pain. Yeah. They're still living yeah. within the pain body, within the yeah. thing. But that should show you that it's real anyway for the fact that you find it so hard to yeah. just speak to yourself. Exactly. About that, yeah, that should tell you. That should that should be an awakening point for people in itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because when you do a lot of this work, you can see it so clearly in others. Yeah. And you're just like... Yeah. And then, but then it's like not your place to yeah, that used to crush me that used to crush me because I think why not the answer right but now I just don't like do you know what I mean because it really used to when I used to try and like help someone and they're still like beating themselves up for no reason and not knowing why this is happening and now I just think oh fuck it do you know what I mean I'm just have to leave by example I'll just do it and then hopefully you'll but I can't fight and think oh you have to do like this so, like just leave them because it's just taken away from my own self you mentioned earlier about the fact you grew up in a very religious household how has that kind of then affected your relationships with family and stuff? So at first, my my mum and dad were, well, my whole family were, they just tried to make me feel like I was crazy. You know what I mean? I talk about Adrian, I talk about this, talk about that, and I'm all like, I've got like a sibling group, and I've got five brothers and sisters, I'm the fourth youngest, and so they'll all just like laugh at me. I'm not joking, like try and bully me out of it, basically, and say, oh, yeah, don't want you to talk about the angel numbers, uh, and just go on like I've gone crazy, if you know what I mean, and all laugh at me and stuff like that. And then it, it's the fact that I just had to like, keep on, because I knew by this time I've already read Abraham Hicks, I've already started manifesting. So then in my head, I just felt sorry for them, because I thought, you, like, I swear down, like, so it didn't really, because I, and I was fresh right at the beginning, I was fresh, fresh. You get me? I was so buzzed. So I kind of knocked that. My mum and dad, they kind of... I was living at my mum and dad's at that time. And I got kicked out. That's when I came out fully as a lesbian because I thought, fuck this. And I can't just be hiding all the time and hiding it from my parents and hide, you know what I mean? Yeah. And because I just knew. So that's the time where I, I lived in my car for a bit. But I knew I was excited to live in my car because I knew what was coming. Do you know what I mean? I really knew because I accepted all of me. Because that was still holding me back. I was still a bit spiritual. But because I was still hiding my sexuality from my mum and stuff like that, then I knew that was that was blocking me still. Because I wasn't fully, fully free or fully, fully open. So now um, the crazy thing is my mum and dad are pastors. They're not just like Christians raising the Christian home. The like Nigerian pastor, so one just being Nigerian itself is like oh, whoa, you get me. So, <laughs> so then being Nigerian pastor is me. So it's one of them where like I just had to do it. There was uh, my mom wrote me a text message one time, and this is even before I came out, before anything like that. And she said like, if you do come out, you'll be you'll be like dirt on the street. If you know what I mean, you'll be like a dog because we we're, we're, we're saying all these things, but saying that my life will work out will like go to shit do you know what i mean because i've gone against god and rah, 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 rah. she probably wrote like a, a mad message to me and then so I, I just took it as it was anyway and she didn't speak to me about it or nothing she just wrote that message to me so anyway once i left the house i swear down within within a few months stayed at my girlfriend's lived in my car for a bit stayed at my girlfriend for a bit and then um, i got my own place and then then, like, everything started moving up. I was working in a sales office at that time, doing my, doing my, well, working as a sales office before my master's, but I was doing my master's and working as a cleaner because I stopped music, everything. And then I got my own place. Everything just went up. That's what I'm saying, year and a half after that, I've got a record deal now. I started working for myself. That's when I started doing more of the therapy bits. And that's everything happened once I moved out the house. You get me? Once I moved out, except and everything went up and up and up. So now my mum says in church, my mum says, oh, like, we have been teaching and things a little bit wrong. You have to start to um, believe in your own power. Now, I swear down, and my sister will message me and say, <laughs> she'll say, oh, mum's teach your life, what mum's preaching this week, because I swear down. Now she adapts what she's preaching now because she sees my life wow. and she thinks that it can't. She's obviously we reevaluating everything that she's been taught because she really believed that because as a lesbian things will because i'm not with god things well her thinking of god things will just go down for me but she'll be i told like mom i am a god you get me and now she starts understanding now she's sort of like we re, re sort of jigging the way she even preaches 
Do you know what I mean? She'll call me up because she counsels people and I'll sit there and I'll counsel her and then she'll counsel people. You get me? She Before, like, I had to get out of the house because I couldn't sit there. I wasn't allowed to see my nephews at one point because no one was allowed to come next to me because I was a lesbian. So hopefully by me just keeping on with what I'm doing. See, if I, imagine if I would have listened to them. That yeah. would sort of instill everything that they believe. You get me? Let me just try and with her. Yeah, but now by me, by me sticking to my guns, and and saying no, this is what I am. I'm not turning back. No, I don't care whether you think I'm weird or whether I've gone crazy. Blah, 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 blah. They saw the results, and now they believe it. You get me? Final last words. <laughs> Final last words <laughs> is: Don't forget to believe in your own self. That's it. Love yourself. You get me? And then that's it. That's it. Just basic. Oh, and also read Abraham Hicks. And thank you for having me. Pussy power, money on the rise, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Wonder blows my mind from having a spiritual awakening, understanding that what we've been told is demonic and bad is really not at all in the slightest, to creating anthems like Rude Girl, all of the songs I'll link to in the show notes, to Pussy Power, doing what the fuck you want and tapping into the wisdom of Eckhart Tolle and Abraham Hicks and even to be in the change by leading by example and not just sitting around, talking about it, creating more problems. Wanda lives and breathes everything that this podcast is about. She tells us that it's safe to rise up and be confident and to love ourselves and makes the great point that just having a couple of crystals isn't enough. You need to do the inner work you need to clear out the shit the limiting beliefs in order for the good stuff i've linked to all of the books below such as the power of now by eckhart tolle and ask and it is given by abraham hicks if you want to dive into those wonder is incredible and i hope she's inspired you as much as she's inspired me pussy power Massive thank you to my wonderful co-host Lavender Rodriguez for their input in this episode. I will link to their music pages in the show notes along with everything else. And this podcast is produced and hosted by me, Carolyn King. You can find us on Instagram at Songs or Spells Podcast, on TikTok at Songs or Spells. We have a Patreon community. The link to that is also in the show notes and on our social bios. Come and join us and look out for Tarot Friday every Friday on the socials.